All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today, I've got another machine from one of my, I guess, most frequent uh, companies that I test machines for and that provide me with machines, and that's Atom Stack. Well, today, guys, this isn't just another machine. Uh, this is the next evolution of the Atom Stack machines, and there's several things that I'm going to point out to you about this machine that is unique from what you've seen in the past. The first thing, guys, is this is the new 40 watt module and you know some of you said i got a big head but compared to a 40 watt module from the atom stack it's not that big uh the traditional uh kind of design that was made uh popular with the a30s and the x30s and so forth as far as the nose cone goes you've got the two separate little pieces coming out uh one is for the air assist and the other just kind of is a cone to kind of bring some of the air from the module through there to help with cleaning. Uh, the plug, some of you have asked about it when you heard I was getting it. It looks like the traditional plug that Adam Stack runs. Uh, this one has the, looks like a five pin. So it is comparable to the V35 as far as the plug, whether they're cross compatible, who knows? But this machine that I have guys is the Adam Stack X40 Max and this machine is 400 by 800 uh, working area. I can tell you before I put it together that one of the things that I like about this machine is they have changed the way lasers do things. Prior to this machine, very few companies had realized that when we put machines in enclosures, we don't put them long ways. We, we turn them sideways. Uh, even Acer, I love my V36, but you have to, it messes with the workspace because you're oriented one way and it, it looks another in light burn well with this machine guys they fix that all right the the x-axis and y-axis are going to be oriented in a manner to where the the, the thinner part of the machine is going to be back uh, and that's a big deal when you're trying to put the machine up against a wall somewhere and get it out of the way to me it is uh, as you can see here on the illustration uh, the machine is going to be wider than it is deep and the controls are going to be here on the front left, which in my enclosure, that's going to put those right over by my workstation. And they've really pulled another one on me this time, guys. They've added automatic air assist to this machine. So I've done a little bit of research on the machine and my homework. It looks similar in the build to most other Atom Stack machines that I've had in the shop. So we're not going to sit down and go through the build piece by piece. But I am going to video it on the overhead camera here, walk you through it, and any problems or hang-ups that I see that, you know, you may, may need to know about, we'll go over those more thoroughly. But the rest of it, we're just going to kind of go through it and follow the book and see how that goes. So let's get this beast put together so we can see what it's uh, all about. All right, guys, most importantly, use the book and kind of orient all the parts the way that the book shows you for them to go. And uh, I'm just kind of following along in the book. And the first step, of course, is going to be to put the four pieces of the main frame together. Uh, fairly simple, two screws in each end of the, uh, the long extrusions there connect to the top part. And just go around those guys. Get everything oriented properly. Make sure that you pay attention to those brackets. Go on the outside, uh, the wheels on the inside. That had me a little confused for a minute there, uh, but we got that straightened out. And uh, pretty much once you get all those screws in, guys, it's off to the next step, which is gonna be to put these uh, end plates on. And uh, those are those little pieces of metal there. Keep in mind, the controller goes on the front left corner so every other location is going to get one of those plates you just pull the belt through there and there's two screws that hold them in place a uh, short screw and a long screw the short screw goes in the end of the extrusion and then the longer screw goes uh, in the uh, channel in the extrusion so fairly simple build uh, this far like i said those three panels go on there and then it's off to uh, the controller so I'll kind of get you, let you watch this in fast forward. Uh, 
The controller, it has a little different screws uh, as far as they, you put the two in the end of the extrusions and then you have the long one. So you got one extra screw in that controller. And uh, notice the chains, the drag chains are already, they've already threaded all the cabling through the drag chains. And that's something that can be a bit of a pain if it's not already done. Uh, but before you get carried away with zip ties and everything, guys, I did find that uh, unlike a lot of machines, Adam Stack included plenty of cabling. So uh, once you get everything plugged up and you get everything where you want it, then you can go back and kind of stretch and pull the length of the wires to where you need extra. At first, I had pulled my hose a little tight on the gantry right here and uh, had to go back and fix that. So uh, also right here, I realized that I needed to push this thing to the back to make sure everything was lined properly up, uh, lined properly when putting it together. And so that was a bit of a misstep on my part. Uh, but once I got it pushed to the back, everything lined up a lot easier and the screws went in really well. And then you got to put the timing linkage rod in. The one thing that I will tell you guys on the uh, side with the stepper, the easiest way that I, I know to tell you how to put this thing on is loosen that back belt just a little bit, pull a little slack above the, the pulley so you can turn it and get that locking nut outwards so you can reach it with your tool to tighten that one up first. Uh, once you tighten that one up, you can go to the other side. And I got lucky over here on the other side. I could actually reach the screws from the back to tighten up that uh, timing linkage and didn't have to loosen the belt on this side. So once I did that, everything moving like it's supposed to and uh, getting ready to put the module and all on. The book does say that before you do that to check the tension on the, the belts. And I did a little 45 lean and it worked out just fine. So. The rest of it, guys, is going to be pretty much put the module on, plug everything in. Everything's good and color coordinated. The plugs are, you know, matched. So it's easy. It's, it's easy to figure out what goes where. And you don't have to run a lot of cabling or mount a whole lot of stuff from this point forward. All right, guys, so the assembly went well. Uh, I, like I said, I'm going to be doing some voiceover, or I should have done some voiceover, to some things to remember. But uh, for the most part, it wasn't that complicated. The book did a pretty good job of laying everything out, and the numbered bags helps also. So now we're over at the computer, and I'm going to show you as far as the SD card. I've got it plugged into the computer as a thumb drive using a little stick they provided, and I'm going to get the files off of it, and we're going to go ahead and start getting ready to put this thing in light burden. So let's move to the screen. All right, so first things first, guys. Uh, anytime I get a new machine, I like to go onto the drive that they ship with it, and see what all is on there and just copy everything on that drive and i go into my machine files here and i create a new folder well it's a network drive sometimes it has to reconnect uh and i'm going to call it the atom stack x40 of course uh, then I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to paste all of that in this directory here. And that way, if there's anything on that SD card that I were to need during the setup process, it will be there. Uh, but we're going to take a little, little tour and see what all is included in the disk uh, while that copies over. So you've got the, uh, yes, this is uh, parameter tables for the 40 watt module. Uh, basically... They're giving you some kind of go-bys of uh, different materials, so that would come in handy, especially if you're new to it uh, and just don't enjoy testing. Uh, of course, I enjoy testing, so I probably just won't be using that. <laughs> but software and a manual, you got all the manuals, and see if, if you have a problem with seeing the uh, text in a lot of the books sometimes, uh, if you'll check these thumb drives first. Uh, a lot of times you can get a, a manual that you can you know put on a monitor and blow it up and get it a little bit bigger. Uh, Windows virtual COM port driver. I'm hoping I don't need that. Uh, looks like it's got the CH34 uh, controller. So hopefully we won't need the, the, the any of the uh, drivers uh, being that I've just recently connected an Atom stack. That shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to go over here to this little SD card that we put in here now. And I'm going to eject that guy. And I'm going to go ahead and install it into the machine. All right, guys, so the last step before we, uh, before we get to making smoke is going to be to connect it with the cable. Uh, so let's get over there to this. Hey, 
guys, I'm not sure what's up with the standard cables, especially with a machine this big. Uh, seriously, out of stack, you could have done a little better. Luckily, I got a longer cable and uh, had it over here to the side, and I've got it connected. Uh, like I said, usually I would recommend you use the factory cable, but I do know that this cable is good, and if I have any connectivity issues, I can always move it closer to the port and use this little guy. So here we go, back down to light burn. All right, so launching light burn, guys, and you're gonna see, let me go ahead and power this machine up. And I know what you're thinking, guys, very confident doing this live, never powered it up before. All right, so we're gonna devices. Uh, the find my laser button typically with atom stack machines is very effective, so we'll hope that we have all the appropriate drivers and everything, and it will find it. Now, the cool part about it is, we should know that it's found the right machine when it shows a machine found with a work area of 800 by 400 or so. 850 by 400, okay. I thought the book said 800. That's even better, guys, it's even better. So we're gonna add the device. Uh, something, what? We're gonna go with other. That's new, never seen that before. Uh, it's got me a little worried. I'm going to turn off auto home at startup. That can get you in trouble sometimes when you're just turning the machine on and have things in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, swap over to that machine. So uh, I'm going to hit the home button. Let's see what happens. Let's go for the gold, guys. All right. So that works. <laughs> so far, so good. Uh, homing is a success, guys. We have a home up. We have homing operation. Uh, I really want to test this machine out, guys, but I got way too much cat traffic in here today, uh, especially with the big 40 watt. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is, especially since I found out this guy's 840 by 850, um, yeah, I think I'm fixing to. Uh, we can at least navigate around. Maybe, maybe, maybe just check to see if it moves correctly. Let's do that. So. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to show you the screen and overhead camera. I'm going to go ahead and use the navigational button. I'm just going to send it to the center of the work area. Let's see how it moves. Okay, smooth. Not exactly neck breaking fast for that. Uh, we'll throw a little area in the work area here and just frame it, see how it moves. All right, everything looks good. It is framing appropriately. That's a lot of weight in that module right there, guys. So, uh, yeah, apparently everything is working. Uh, we'll go in here, and I'll show you guys how to do this right quick for those of you that don't know. What I'm going to go, I'm going to my device settings uh, because I do want to use a laser button to fire and frame. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those on. Uh, another thing that I like to do, and this is uh, optional, but I, I really think it's a good idea, is when the cut gets through, I want my machine back here in the back corner out of the way of my work area. And since this thing's 400 by 850, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the return to position on the Y axis, which is front to back, luckily, because they oriented this machine properly when they built it. Thank you, Adam Stack, for that, by the way. Uh, the Y axis, I'm going to set my return to location at 390. That keeps me 10 millimeters off the corners, just in case. And then I'm going to set my X, which is right to left. I'm going to set that to 10. So basically, that's going to make my laser go to layer right there and park out of the way when I run a job. Now, just to test that, let's... Uh, let's all right, guys, so this is how the return to location works. I'm going to home the machine. Uh, like I said, a lot of these machines, most of these machines, home in the front left corner. And when you're getting material in and out, it just puts everything in the way. So what I like to do, especially if you're batching out multiple things, is set that return to location, just like I showed you here. Go to edit, device settings, enable it, stand by, edit up here, let's walk through that again one more time, edit, device settings, go down here and enable laser fire, laser frame, and then the return to location, set it to your back left corner. So what happens then is, and I'm going to show you the screen over top here. So when I frame this out, of course, just leave it at home position. It's going to run out there. It's going to make its frame real quick. And once it does that, if I send the job, check it for cats. 
no catch present. All right, we're gonna do this 2% power burn here. Uh, and just basically to show you what happens when it completes the burn, it's gonna to go to the back left. So now when you try to get materials in and out, you don't have to climb over that big module and all that cabling to get stuff in and out of there. And the good news is at 2%, it didn't even, I don't even know if it fired because it didn't even burn the plastic off of this metal. I really, really want to make this, use this machine to make some smoke, guys. But I got to get it in an enclosure first. Uh, it's going to be put, getting put in an enclosure of Zilla. And if it can earn a spot, it'll get to stay. If it can't earn a spot in an enclosure of Zilla, then I can always put the V36 back in there. But guys, I know Adam Stack. I know their reputation. It's probably going to get to stay. So. All right, guys. I'm excited about this machine, okay? This is my fourth Atom Stack machine that I've had. I started out from a little tripod, five watt, five and a half watt Atom Stack, maybe, maybe a 10, don't quote me on that. But it was a little small, like literally this big Atom Stack, okay? I've went to the A35, the A30, which was a powerhouse of a machine. It's a workhorse. Uh, Klein actually has it at his, at his shop using it currently. And uh, recently I got the Atom Stack A24, which is a powerful little compact machine, but <clears throat> nothing in this shop has ever been 48 watts of power. Now, the module is switchable between 48 and 24, but why? I don't know. Uh, so this machine definitely will be getting at least a tryout for Enclosure Zilla because I do a lot of my cutting jobs, my stove covers and things like that in there. So I gotta have a massive work area, but I need plenty of power. And doing the stove covers could be one of the few times that I might could see using the 24 versus the 40, just because I'm gonna be engraving rather than cutting. So I hate that you're not gonna to get to see it cut anything, but I've gotta get it in the enclosure first. And I do plan on doing that tonight, but I don't know I'm gonna have time to make a video for you guys to see it doing that. It may pop up alive, who knows, so stay tuned. But anyway, guys, this is the new Atom Stack X40. And in my opinion, so far, the best built Atom Stack I've had in the shop. So I look forward to testing it out. Uh, appreciate Atom Stack sending the machine out to me. We've had a long, like two years of cooperating on machines and me getting to test machines. And I really, really do like the products. So if you want to check those out, look down below. I'll put a list to the new X40 Max. And this is the Max version, guys, 40 watt. I asked... I told them go big or go home if you want to send it to me. So they sent me the max 40 watt. And basically when I get this put in here, I'm going to have a really big CO2-ish ish machine with the size of the work area, the drop bed, automatic air assist. What else could I want? So anyway, guys, I look forward to getting to test the machine out. I'll try to share it with you. But uh, drop a little thumbs up down there. Hit that like button if you like the video. And uh until next time, be safe and have a good day.